I don't see the old Michigan stuff because I don't know anybody that is a Michigan.
Hey everyone, Sean from Legacy Event Group here. This live stream is just to be able to show that I have a haircut and it's a phenomenal haircut. Thank you, Ashley. As far as clips, I was waiting so long. There were so many uh, videos that we were doing and I was looking at myself in the hair and I was like, oh my God, I've got to get a haircut. Uh, so that's all this is actually for. Um, but we have one of our really good friends here that we're going to talk to in the meantime, and that is Nick from 808 Studios. Nick, thank you for coming and talking to us, telling us a little bit more about your company, but also telling everyone at home about your company because we've been working with Nick for several years. Uh, I call him a friend, and I hope he calls me one too, at least to my face. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> But uh, if you are on one of our live stream platforms and you're listening to us or watching, watching us right now and you want to drop a question in the link, uh, we are going to be monitoring that a little bit, but we're also going to be forwarding any questions that you ask us on to Nick and Nick will be in contact with you directly about the information that you're asking. So we're going to try to get some uh, deep dives into some topics here about photography, about wedding photography, um, and be able to see if we can pick Nick's brain about some things. But if you have any questions, let us know or contact Nick for follow-up. So first, Nick, I know a lot about you, but I would like uh, you to tell us a little bit more about you, uh, us, the, uh, the watchers, a little bit more about your company, but also about yourself. Um, because companies evolve over the years. Uh, as people who work for and or own these companies, we have our own personalities, right? So, <laughs> so tell me about not just 808 Studios, but also a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Well, thanks for having me. I also am sporting a haircut from Sport Clips. Shout out to Lori. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> <coughs> Three months overdue. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I started my company 25 years ago. Um, got into photography just kind of uh, doing it at school when I was in middle school, when I was in high school. Uh, There's just something for me that was magical about it. <clears throat> uh, doing film. Uh, putting my own photos, uh, I just loved that whole process, uh, and still to this day, even though it's you know completely digital now, uh, still love the process. So that's about your company or about you. Yep. You didn't mention Legos. Come on, man. You <laughs> got to mention Legos. Uh, it, see, this is this is the, the the hard thing for me. You're basically making me do two things I don't like. <laughs> Being in front of a camera and talking about myself. I, I had two least favorite things in the world. Uh, yeah, I, so uh, really, you know, I, I, since I've been a kid, I've, I've enjoyed doing Lego. Uh, didn't do it for a long time when I started up my business, uh, you know, for years and years. I wasn't really into it. Uh, bought a house in 2004. Uh, Mom called me one day and said, you know, get your crap out of our attic, basically. Uh, went over there, got my stuff, uh, found a big tub of Lego that I had a train in there that I used to put around our tree at Christmas time. Uh, it's kind of a family tradition of ours. So I actually got that train back out. I put it around the little tree that I bought that was, you know, my Garfield and OD Christmas tree that year <laughs> uh, for my new house. I didn't have any more money. I, I already bought the house, you know. <laughs> Uh, so I put the train around it, uh, and I really caught the bug after that. Uh, now I'm the vice president of Cincy Lug. We're a big Lego user group here in Cincinnati. Uh, we do giant displays. I uh, do about a five, 6,000 square foot Christmas display at the Cincinnati Museum Center every year. Nice. Um, yeah, really into doing a lot of the towns and the trains. Um, many of our other members do um, some fantasy stuff and holiday things, Star Wars. Uh, lots of different things. So <clears throat> it's a fun hobby to have to kind of get away from the business. You know, it's, I'm either, you know, with my family, I'm doing my business, or, you know, the little bit of free time I have, I'm doing my Lego. Yeah. So uh, in the, when I was a police officer, I really disliked police movies really, really, really badly because they didn't portray accurately anything uh, very seldom, I should say, about, about policing. Um, Even is the, the police academy is the, is the Lego movie? Is that something that Lego people despise, or is it a good? If who would you be in the Lego movie? If I if you loved don't the it? first Lego movie because I loved the uh, the the premise of the movie, the idea behind the movie. Um, I see myself doing that to my kids. They were talking about like you got to keep everything together and. You know, keep it in the box and, you know, only create what's based on the instructions. Um, I 
loved that movie because it's a reminder of uh, what Lego is, is just being creative and being able to do your own thing. You know, you might buy a set because it's a neat thing to build because you've got the instructions to create exactly what they give you. Uh, but the other thing that I love about it is tearing that apart and creating something else out of it. Um, I take giant boxes of buildings, um, sets 10, 20 at a time, uh, dump them into one bin and create something else out of it. Um, so that's, that's the thing that I really liked about the movie. Batman movie, all the other themes, <laughs> not really my forte. I, I do like, uh, is it Will Forte that's Batman? Mm -hmm. or the, the guy that plays Batman? Uh, it's pretty funny. I don't like, so like you a were, comedy. So you were president in business? Uh, you know, <laughs> was, I'm president, the, was president business? <laughs> president, <laughs> I'm not the craggle guy. Uh, yeah, I don't super glue my stuff. That's a big no no with Legos, the super gluing. Um, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not really something we. <laughs> We're allowed to do as a as a hobby, so yeah. So uh, one last question on Legos, and we'll move on. Uh, do you photograph Legos? I saw like a uh, it was a bride and groom, I think it was, or a couple that were being photographed in Legos, like with backgrounds and things that looked like a regular wedding. Yeah, and they were kind of like shown in different wedding poses and stuff. Yeah. Might have been Barbies actually now that I think about it, but uh, you ever photographed them? Is that something that you do or? So I'm sure maybe like you, when somebody's in the family that's getting married, you're gonna be their DJ usually, you know. With my group, I'm the photographer in the group. <laughs> I know how to do it. Therefore, I do the photography for the group. Uh, but that's really it. I mean, just photographing so that I can share um, being a part of all these shows, uh, getting out there and meeting different people that are into the hobby, uh, getting to know them and them becoming members of our club is great. So, you know, really nice, good photographs that show the detail that we do, uh, really important to our club. So, um, obviously, uh, Lego photography is not your only style. If someone were to, and I, I don't know I don't know how to explain what a style is for a photographer. Mm -hmm. I can tell the difference between one photographer's style and another photographer's style, but I would not be able to articulate that. So could you tell everyone kind of what your style is and is that your only style? Do you move to different styles? Is there like a style that you're, that you're still you know, looking to explore? What would be your style as a photographer? Sure. I don't really feel like you could put us into a box um, you know, we're definitely more candid, more photojournalistic, uh, but there's definitely not one box that you could put us in. I think the reason that we are as successful as we are is that we cover a lot of different areas. Uh, some people are really traditional, some are very candid, um, some are very hands-on, some people, some photographers don't talk to you at all the day of the wedding. Uh, we're good at knowing when we need to step in to chat with our clients and ask them questions. Uh, but we're excellent at being able to stay away from them to let them be themselves. Um, I don't really feel like we're all, you know, photojournalistic because we don't, you know, just shoot candids all the time. Uh, I spend a lot of time with my clients prior to the wedding discussing their needs and the things that they want. Uh, so I get to know exactly the kind of couple that they are with, you know, I, we need a little more help throughout the day. Uh, most of them are new to this. They've never been married before. Um, so I like to kind of get to know them to see, um, you know, what kind of couple they are, uh, how much, you know, to what degree I would need to step in and uh, maybe hold their hand a little bit through this. And, you know, when I need to step back and just let them be themselves and enjoy the day. Is there like a is there a favorite shot for you or a favorite pose or something that you like a lot? Yeah, the the thing that I love uh, and that I really try to do the most of I think throughout the time when I'm with a couple and certainly the wedding party uh, is to just make jokes with them, have a good time, uh, let them feel all those great feelings and all those emotions uh, that are there. Uh, and then us be able to capture them uh, laughing, joking with each other, um, you know, pointing at each other when <clears throat> they point out their faults, like, dude, your zipper's down. You know, those moments when they're laughing with each other, 
are, are, are great moments that need to be captured because they need to be shared with the future. Um, you know, that might be the bride and groom with their parents two weeks after the wedding. Uh, it might be them with their grandkids someday, maybe their great grandkids. Uh, but the future needs to know about the bride and groom uh, enjoying their day, having a great time, and being in love. So that's what we're trying to go for. So um, having the eye for that or being able to, to see something that obviously you can't have a camera on them at all times. And this is something that we realized when we first started live streaming weddings that people I don't think are used to in the fact that when we live stream a wedding, there is a camera in the room at all times. So anything you say, anything you see <laughs> is captured and broadcast out to everybody watching at home. So that was a little bit different. But as a photographer, uh, you would have to be almost be prepared for that. Um, does that does that what differentiates a professional photographer from a for photographer from someone who just does it as a hobby? Or is there any other distinguishing differences between you know, everyone that has a camera thinks they're a photographer. Absolutely. What's the, really the difference? So I think that is the biggest difference between a good professional photographer and, you know, somebody who just started doing this. It's that years of experience that they know and can anticipate when those moments are going to happen. <clears throat> or a, maybe even, which we do a lot of the time, uh, help to create those moments for those couples. Uh, you know, a lot of times uh, we'll be with the bride uh, and all of her bridesmaids in the room where she's getting ready. Uh, she might be finishing by uh, putting on her earrings, putting on that final uh, piece of jewelry or something. Uh, and that's maybe the moment when dad's outside waiting to see her for the first time. Uh, you know, I think a lot of other photographers would just be like, yeah, send dad on in and, and I'll just take some pictures. I like to step outside and just tell dad where she is or maybe give the bride a moment to turn around and you know maybe compose herself because she knows that's going to be a big moment for her. Uh, I like to maybe tell dad, hey, this is going to be a moment you're going to want to get your handkerchief out uh, or maybe have a tissue with you. Um, giving them that moment to compose themselves uh, and kind of think about what's going to happen uh, sometimes evokes a lot of that emotion, uh, sort of brings it out. Um, you know, moments being completely candid make for nice images sometimes, but they can also sort of ruin the moment. Uh, we're doing a first look with a bride and groom, which is my favorite part of the day. Um, having that bride and groom know that they're both anxious, that they are both really looking forward to this moment, which is something I like to tell them, you know, oh, she looks beautiful. You know, she can't wait to see you. That makes them feel even more when they do see each other. Um, when they get emotional, when they get teary-eyed, uh, when they high-five each other, <laughs> uh, you know, when he spins her around to see all the dress, uh, those moments for me are uh, just awesome and it's just really a great, uh, a great thing to be a part of them. Do you ever, so uh, understanding that um, uh, you have a lot of control over what happens before the wedding, you know, like the getting ready and the and the, the, the limo ride and things like that. And I'm speaking from experience at this point because you photographed Brandon's wedding and I was the best man. So I was actually able to see the other side of this. Talk that, about a fun day. We that was a, a fun time. day, yeah. <laughs> I uh, never really knew you know, how much you controlled beforehand. And I also thank you for, for understanding that when we come to the wedding, sometimes we have a timeline and, and that transitions always work smoothly for us. And I never really realized how control how much you were in control in the beginning. But are you do you help them create those beforehand? You know, is it something like in a meeting where you go, uh, we're gonna do a first look and let's talk about the first look, and then maybe we're gonna do this, this, and this, and then the couple, you know, I, I think it, on Brandon's it was like a corner of a building, if I if I remember correctly. Um, is that something you help them with? Is that something you help plan them? Is it something, because the, you know, the day of is kind of difficult sometimes. So mm -hmm. in your planning process, does that include some of these creating moments? Absolutely. Like you guys were really big on prepping prior to the wedding. Uh, we like doing engagement sessions with our couples so we can get to know them. Uh, every one of our packages, regardless if it's the smallest to the biggest, 
Uh, we do a planning session and we take all the time necessary to sit down with our clients and to talk about everything that they want. What's most important to you? What do you care about the most? What do you want to make sure gets captured? We'll talk about family photos. Uh, we write down the names of everybody in the family so nobody gets left out. Uh, we really want to make sure that everything is written down, taken care of so we can take the burden off of our couples to let them enjoy themselves and be part of those moments, be present in them, and let us worry about all the details. Um, uh, as far as like first looks go, uh, we tend to talk with them about where they would like to do that first look, and we really want to make that a private moment for the couple. Um, you know, in, in Brandon's case, <clears throat> uh, we were with the entire wedding party because we had all traveled to the same place to do photos. Um, I tend to like to have just the bride and groom together. Uh, it, it's a nice moment for just the two of them and it's probably the only moment they're gonna have that's just about the two of them the day of the wedding. Uh, but the flip side of that too, which I'm glad we did with Brandon's wedding, was it was really fun to do that first look while the wedding party watched. Because everybody clapped and cheered. When Brandon got emotional, the girls all went, oh! <laughs> and those made great moments for, you know, candid moments with the uh, wedding party watching. Um, so I tend to want the bride and groom, uh, you know, just by themselves when they're doing their first look, uh, but it's for selfish reasons. I want them to say things to them, uh, to each other, that they're going to remember for the rest of their lives that nobody else is going to be a part of. Um, I love when they get uh, teary-eyed, you know, especially I love when the groom gets a little teary-eyed. Um, he's probably not going to do that in front of you know, his eight best friends, college buddies that he wants to get drunk with all the time. <laughs> uh, so, you know, taking them out of maybe a more stressful situation, uh, standing in front of a bunch of people uh, and putting them into a moment where they can truly connect is, is always special. Well, you didn't have to worry about that with Brandon because I've been with him when he's drunk and he cries every time. <laughs> it's really an emotional, <laughs> it's an emotional trip every time. <laughs> Uh, I'm an emotional guy. Uh, you know, I find myself getting a little teary-eyed when, uh, you know, dad reaches his elbow out for his daughter that moment right before they walk down the aisle. Um, that moment when he steps back after giving her away. Uh, love those moments. Uh, that's, that's, it's something that I enjoy seeing and I enjoy being a part of, but man, I just love capturing it. Love to be able to be a part of those moments. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That's uh, probably one of the things that keeps you doing this, right, is uh, seeing those moments and getting to relive them. There's so much negativity in the world. Uh, I think sometimes it's nice just to see the positive and to see the, to see the good things. It is. I, I feel really good after a day, you know, most of my days, 10, 12 hours minimum at a wedding. I might have to drive an hour or two to get there and an hour or two back. Uh, they are tiring. I'm absolutely exhausted the day of the wedding. Uh, Sundays are usually, you know, sitting on the couch and recuperating. <laughs> but there's just this huge sense of pride that we've accomplished, uh, you know, capturing everything for the couple, getting them uh, to stop at the bar and spend some time with their friends throughout the day, uh, letting them be able to connect with their family and friends. Uh, huge sense of accomplishment and knowing that we've able to you know, certainly let them do those things, but also be there to capture that for them. Well, that's awesome. And uh, to throw another compliment your way, being on the other side of it, I thought you had a good balance of uh, being uh, directive, but not being pushy. Because sometimes uh, uh, bridal parties can be unruly. <laughs> <laughs> and when, uh, when it, you're it's wedding... just the beer talking half the time. <laughs> when your wedding party's unruly, sometimes you look to the couple and say, hey, can we, but you did a great job of not burdening them with any directive kind of things and just taking care of yourself. So thank you for that. You're welcome. I, I feel like I understand the looks that I get from the bride and groom a lot. You know, sometimes the bride might need a little less mom around. Mm -hmm. uh, she might need a little more husband there with her at that time. Uh, I feel like I'm good at understanding that. Uh, and then say, hey, all right, wedding party, it's time to head back to the limo. I just need to take them over here to do this. Uh, you know, fun to do that. Awesome. So uh, let's get into the packages that you offer and things like that. And well, not necessarily the financials that revolve around it, but 
how do you package things? Uh, some people will include a lot of different extras, prints, canvases, things like that. Sure. Some people will a la carte that kind of thing. What kind of offerings do you have or can clients expect when coming to 808 as far as the packages that you offer and how you bundle things together? Yeah, so we're, I feel really inclusive with our packages. Uh, the thing I hear constantly is, you know, we talked to somebody else, uh, this person's only a few hours, then we had to add this, and they wanted this, this, and this on top of. I feel like we want to just be able to give the clients it is, you know, exactly what they want, which is most of the time pretty much everything we offer, uh, and give that to them for one set price they can easily understand. Um, I'm not one to start at a tiny price and add a bunch of stuff to the point where they've maybe tripled or quadrupled their sale like a lot of other photographers do. Um, our most popular package, uh, it includes everything we do uh, with the exception of an album. Most couples tend to not want albums nowadays. Uh, digital files are included. Uh, we do 10 hours of coverage with two photographers in that package. Uh, we include a photo booth for the reception that's up at the entire time of the reception. Uh, and we do large four by six prints for the guests. A uh, bit different from the traditional photo booth, even uh, awfully different from uh, the uh, photo booth that you guys offer. Uh, but just, you know, something that includes everything that we do. Uh, I think the most popular thing in that package that we do, that our clients adore, uh, is our USB box. Something I don't see anybody else doing in the area. Uh, it's a USB drive. It has all their photos in it from their engagement session their wedding, uh, and then of course their photo booth. Excuse me, but it also includes about 70 five by seven prints. So two weeks after the wedding, when they get their USB drive, they get their pictures back from us. They're getting a big stack of beautiful prints that they can share with anybody at any time. Uh, I really feel it's something that uh, becomes a family heirloom. Uh, it will be here when the bride and groom are long gone. Um, something they can share with their grandparents a few weeks after the wedding, something they can look at together with a bottle of wine on their 10th anniversary, uh, something they'll be able to look at with their grandkids someday. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Um, so you had mentioned the photo booth and you had mentioned the differences between your photo booth and our photo booth. Um, I know the differences. You yeah. know the differences. Absolutely. I don't know if sure, sure they know the differences. <laughs> sure. So tell them the differences because we, we will hit on this a lot with our clients when they're trying to decide which one to choose but because they are so different and they offer a very different experience. So tell yep. us a little bit about your photo booth. So my photo booth is open air style. Uh, I don't do backgrounds. I don't do props, uh, masks, those kind of things. Uh, I want it to be more about the guests just enjoying themselves. I want you to have a nice picture of them with a drink in their hands. I want you to have a silly picture of them all sweaty, red-faced from being on the dance floor all night long when they're three sheets to the wind. <laughs> uh, I want them to be able to do, you know, maybe a bride with grandma. Then I want bride with grandma and mom together in a three generations photo. But I also want to be able to do huge groups. You might have 40, 50 people from college and you want a photo with everybody together. I want the bride and groom to be able to capture, uh, well, we're the ones that capture it. Uh, I want them to have those great moments at the reception uh, in a print or in a photo that they can enjoy later on. Um, our photo booth also, uh, as an add-on, we do what's called a photo guest book, which is sort of like an album slash scrapbook, uh, though it's a little nicer, uh, of all the photos printed directly on paper that everybody writes a message to the bride and groom on. We take all those, we collect them throughout the night, we finish it with a cover of uh, a shot from the bride and groom's uh, the day of, uh, and then we bind them into a book with a wooden cover. That's our photo guest book, and they get that at the end of the night. So that's a big difference in what we do in doing a nice little album along with the photos of everybody at the reception. Now, the guests go home with a large 4 by 6 print. I uh, believe you guys do strips uh, with multiple images. Uh, ours is one image that's 4 by 6 so they can put it in a frame. They can do something with it afterwards uh, that's not just maybe put it up on the refrigerator or pin it to a board or something. Um, and then we put ours into nice little envelopes. It definitely comes across as a gift from the bride and groom. Um, so a little bit different. Uh, our images are always in black and white. I know yours are usually in color, correct? 
Um, so our images are in black and white just to kind of keep that uh, sort of, I guess, maybe classy look to it. When you get a lot of people, 15, 20 people all wearing different outfits, it can look a little noisy. Mm -hmm. um, so just something, I think, different from a typical photo booth. Um, not really something, uh, it's definitely not something everybody has to crowd into. Your booth is really nice that it's open, so you can have you know more than two or three people in it. A lot of these sort of traditional photo booths, like something you'd see in a mall, I tend to see as only being able to do one, two, maybe three people at once. I want to be able to do big groups, large parties, that kind of stuff. So that's why we do it open air style. One of the things that I think that, uh, that I always considered a benefit to the way that you do photo booths is the, the setup inside the room, the, the layout and the logistics. I have seen you put a photo booth in places where our photo booth could never go because it's a stationary device that requires a plug-in for the entire time um, and it requires a throw. In other words, the booth is always here, the background is always there, and you know props always have to stay here. I've seen you fit into places that we would never be able to do, still have a phenomenal experience in the photo booth, but also um, keep that logistic style of, or I'm sorry, the uh, layout style of things the way that the couple wants. Yeah. And so that's one of the great things that I think is about your photo. I think last time uh, at Stone Valley, you were almost almost in a hallway. I mean, you were there by the stairs, <laughs> but there was literally a hallway right next to you yeah. where the bathrooms went back. Yeah. Our booth never would have worked there because people would have had to uh, walk right in front of the, the booth to be able to do that. To get back you just step yeah. forward, let people go, and then would step back and take the picture, and we'd go back as far as you needed to take as much as you needed to. So sure. uh, I think that's one of the great things, uh, one of the many great things about the way that you guys do photo booths. So. It's, it's very flexible. Uh, we pride ourselves on being flexible for our clients. If I need to have the photo booth set up during cocktail hour, uh, that might just entail me having a light with a camera while the printer's in another room because it's a wireless system. Uh, I can have the printer, the computers in you know this part of the room while I'm over on the complete opposite side of the room doing the photos. Um, it's flexible that I can, uh, and because the camera's wireless, uh, do large group photos maybe outside of the reception room. I might take the camera up to the top of the balcony at uh, Stone Valley Meadows and shoot down onto the dance floor for a big group photo or something. Uh, so we want to have that flexibility there. Um, you know, I, I sometimes go over to the uh, grandparents' table. They tend to sit there most of the night. They're not <laughs> listening, dancing to the latest Jay-Z song. Uh, so I like to be able to take the camera to them. Uh, do their photos there so they don't maybe have to wait in line or something and then bring the photo to them to write on and collect it from them at the end of the night. Um, you know, just something that uh, fits easily. Uh, the background we tend to do is the DJ's lights on the dance floor. Uh, we tend to shoot out into the party. Uh, definitely a much more candid feel to the images rather than, you know, a typical, uh, uh, like a, a, a background to the images. Speaking of background and our dance lighting, uh, we just spoke to a client not too long ago from Stone Valley Meadows where you took a picture outside shining in. This has nothing to do with photo booth, by the way, <laughs> but, uh, but it was a picture of the couple with the background of the glass windows of Stone Valley and our dance lights were in the background. Yeah, full of color. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, it was, it was a great mix and, and, I, and I, I was talking to them about that picture and I said, that actually wasn't like like staged or anything Nick just went out and like found I said we can like make it different colors if you want to but <laughs> but being able to capture that background just great eye I'm just going to give you another compliment on that it was a great eye and I'm sure you took a lot of pictures to be able to get the colors uh, what you wanted them to because yep. I know those dance lights were going crazy I, there, I know so. <laughs> exactly the shot you're talking about and I think I probably shot 15 20 in a row <laughs> Because the, the lights are constantly moving, and that was the most colorful one that I could find. Yeah. Uh, another reason that I do really enjoy working with Legacy Event Group uh, is their flexibility in having the lighting, uh, making sure that the room looks the way that it should, uh, and then the sound sounds the way that it should. Um, really brings a lot to our photos at the reception. Uh, when you're just shooting into a dark room, you're not really getting that character out of it. Uh, adding a little uplighting can go a really long way. And I don't know if you know or not, but we wheeled those lights out from the back <laughs> because the dance floor was right there by the head table and we yep. didn't want our lights to be in the pictures for the head table. So when dancing started, we wheeled them out to be able to get out there. So 
Yeah, you are generally pretty close to the dance floor. Mm -hmm. uh, that night at Stone Valley Meadows, you had all, I believe, of the guest tables between you and the dance floor, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, uh, typical DJs will just set up their stuff on their folding table that's provided to them that usually doesn't have a tablecloth. <laughs> uh, and, you know, put their mic next to them and put their lights next to them, and that's that, which would be wasted money for the bride and groom because the lights aren't going to travel across, you know, 300 people sitting at dinner. Yeah. Um, being able to be flexible and taking that extra moment to move that stuff out to the dance floor is a big difference for the couple. Well, one of the reasons we like working with the flexibility is only there if all vendors are flexible. <laughs> so, um, so I'd like to now get into, so we talked about kind of, you know, what 808 is, some of your services, uh, how you see things, how you photograph things, your style. What does the client journey look like if someone is interested in 808? Like, where do they go? What do they see? What do they do? Do they have you know, meetings with you ahead of time, consultations? What does the entire journey look like from their interest in you all the way to the, uh, actually, we'll just stop at like getting there the day of the wedding. I was going to say, how much time do we have? <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, usually they will typically reach out to us through our website. Um, you know, they've generally seen the work that we've done for a friend, a family member, uh, most of our business comes from referrals from either, you know, the brother, the sister, the friend, or from other vendors uh, like Legacy Event Group. So uh, they'll typically reach out to us there. Uh, I, I'm pretty easy going, so I just like to reach out with a text message and say hi, uh, get them uh, my phone number so that we can just chat on the phone uh, to see if we'd be a good fit. Uh, first thing that I like to ask is, you know, how you found out about us. I'd uh, like to ask them how they met. Uh, love to hear the engagement story. It's always funny. You know, there's always a little bit of humor there. Uh, and, you know, really like to just ask them what they're looking for and what they're hoping to have for their wedding. Uh, the client that says, I want to have a good time. I want to enjoy myself. I don't want to worry about anything. That's the kind of client I'm looking for. They could be... Um, you know, the youngest client, the oldest client, uh, you know, my clients vary drastically. But the thing that is common between all of them is they want to enjoy themselves. Uh, they want to have a good time. And I can see why they're spending a lot of money. They're doing a lot of time uh, prepping for it. Uh, the most important people in their lives are there. Uh, they want to be able to enjoy every minute of it. Um, when we do our initial consultation on the phone, which is just usually a chat to get to know each other, uh, though here with the COVID stuff, uh, we've been doing pretty much our entire consultation over the phone. Um, then we tend to move into the booking process. Um, most of our couples like what they hear. They enjoy the price that we have. Uh, they enjoy all the stuff that's included for the price that they're getting. <laughs> uh, so they tend to book with us rather quickly the next day, the evening that we talk, that kind of thing. Uh, we do all of our bookings online. Uh, everything's nice and easy to where they just basically type in their information, uh, type their name to sign it, they pay their retainer, and they're booked. Uh, from there, we plan on when we're doing the engagement session. For us, that's typically in the fall or in the spring before it gets too busy. Um, I don't really like shooting in the summer when it's real hot, when everybody gets those you know sticky foreheads. If you want to get cuddly in the engagement session and <laughs> sticky foreheads aren't great for cuddling. Uh, so, uh, and my favorite time of year to shoot with the leaves and all the color uh, in the fall is in the fall. Um, so we'll typically do the engagement session a few months out from the wedding. Sometimes it can be a year or two out. Sometimes it can be a few weeks prior to the wedding. Um, after we do the engagement session, which again is a real great way for me to get to know them see their best angles, see the things that they like and don't like about maybe themselves. <laughs> uh, one thing I get a lot from grooms is, you know, hey, maybe not a lot of the back of me. I get a little spot, <laughs> not real thick back there. And, uh, you know, sometimes us guys don't really like the uh, spare tire around here. So uh, kind of make some notes throughout the engagement session about the things that they like, the things that they talk about. Uh, and I like to talk with them at the engagement session 
about their family, uh, their wedding party. I always like to ask the groom who the groomsman is that I'm going to be able to pick on that day. Uh, he's usually the last one in the group. Um, so I like to know who I'm able to joke around with uh, and, and have a good time with that day. Um, from there, pardon me, uh, uh, we do our planning session with our couple typically six to four weeks prior to the wedding. Uh, they will automatically get an email from me six weeks out that says, hey, it's about that time to do your uh, planning session. When can we get together? Uh, where's a good place for you guys? Uh, some writing rooms, that's a bar downtown. Some writing rooms, it's a Panera Bread on their lunch hour. Um, you know, it's uh, different for everybody, uh, but the most important thing that we're going to do is get together face to face and talk about everything. Every little detail from even really before we get there all the way through the end of the night when we're packing up with the DJs with <laughs> our photo booth, uh, we're going to talk about and we're going to make sure that everything that they want, uh, uh, everything that's on the list of needs to get done is written down so we can just do it for them when the time comes. You know, she might have a huge list of all these photos she wants with the girls and he probably wants eh, one with my best man, that'll be it. Uh, but I'm going to write all that stuff down to make sure that nothing gets skipped over. We do the family photos. We do a lot of really big Catholic weddings. So they've got eight, ten brothers and sisters, <laughs> maybe 30 nieces and nephews. Uh, so I'm going to write down everybody's names to make sure that nobody gets skipped over. Uh, the, the last thing I want to hear is, oh, man, I wish we would have gotten this photo, that photo. Um, so we're very thorough in that uh, uh, planning session to make sure we don't skip over anything. Um, we want to talk about certainly the shots that they want to have, but I also want to talk about some shots maybe I'd like to do for them. Uh, I always bring an iPad or at least my phone to show some images of places they might want to go. Uh, hey, you're getting married at the Dayton Art Institute. Right across the street's the Masonic Temple, and they've got these awesome copper doors. That might be a great place to go to. Um, I'm getting married at Carillon Park. Right across the street from Carillon Park, there's this great little spot not a lot of people know about. Maybe I'd like to take you there. What are some of the colors you have in your wedding? Well, we're going with blue. There's this really cool old abandoned building with this blue chippy paint. Might be really cool to take you to. Um, one of my favorite spots, uh, album that we have at our studio, uh, was a big blue wall next to an old Chinese restaurant down by UD. So people just say, oh, man, I love that. That's cool. We want to go there. Sorry, UD bought the building. They tore it down five, six years ago. <laughs> but I got this other place that's actually a little closer that we can go to. It's the same kind of a wall. Let's go there. Uh, I said, great, yeah, let's do that. Uh, so with us, planning is a big part of what we do because we don't want our clients worrying about anything the day of the wedding. I'll often tell them I'd rather them have a beer in their hand than a watch on their wrist. Uh, for us, it's really important that they don't worry about anything. That's when they can laugh and connect and, you know, toast each other and just have a good time doing what they're doing. If they're having a good time, I'm having a good time and I'm getting great shots. So you're going to help them along the process. Absolutely. Um, sounds like you're going to meet ahead of time and go over some shots, maybe get their, their input on stuff mixed with your experience and things like that to really find that good mix in the middle of uh, what they're looking for along with your talent. Why else would someone choose 808? With their, there are a lot of great photography companies out there. What makes you unique from somebody else that say does the same meetings and stuff ahead of time? Why would someone choose 808 over someone else? I think as a whole, everything that we do is, I don't want to say superior to everybody else, but I think everything that we do is excellent. In the preparation, the engagement session, uh, the planning session with our couples, uh, working with them the day of to let them be themselves and to know when we need to step in and help them out, to know when we need to step back and let them enjoy themselves. Uh, but after the wedding, uh, we're spending a lot of time editing their images to make sure that they look their absolute best in every one of those images. Uh, we do image e editing and image enhancement to every single image our client gets. Uh, allows us to bring the detail in her dress out if it's washed out. Uh, allows us to edit the skin tones to make sure they look 
the way they're supposed to. They're never going to look a little green, a little purple, a little blue. All of that image editing is done by us prior to the or prior to the delivery to the client uh, to ensure that they're getting excellent images right off the bat. Uh, we give all of our clients the full resolution file on their USB drive, so they're able to make all the prints they want to, make the albums, the canvases, anything they want to in the future from that USB drive. So we want to make sure that they're perfect for them so they have that opportunity to do those things and want to do that in the future. Uh, I've heard from a lot of couples over the years who've had brothers, sisters, friends get married. Their photographer didn't do the image editing and they weren't really happy with the way the photos turned out. They might have been great moments, but the dress is green, the dress is yellow, um, his blue suit looks brown in the photos. Um, you know, then they're not happy with them, they're not proud of them, and they're not sharing them. They don't want to show them off to everybody. They don't want to make prints that will be around for generations for people to enjoy. Um, being able to be proud of the work that they've got, feel like they got it for a good price, and feel like they were really taken care of uh, by the people who did it, I think is really important for us, and I think that's one of those reasons we really stand out from the crowd. Um, that time that we spend editing those images, printing them, putting them in their box, and handing it to them personally, uh, I think is an experience they're not getting anywhere else. Okay, so I'm sold, and <laughs> and I have chosen. So hand I have, me your credit card. It's only nineteen ninety nine. So I have uh, I've chosen eight oh eight for my photography. Um, I'm having a wedding. Um, when I'm at the event, how? do you interact with the other vendors there and and especially and and, and focus a lot on uh, the timeline also because with us we work together so many times that we kind of have a, a, a the same brain there when it comes to like how <laughs> things are going to happen and when they're going to happen yeah. and we're constantly in communication with each other <laughs> but i'm not at the other events that you do um, and when you were explaining like how some DJs do it, I'm glad I'm not because I would <laughs> just not, I would not be able to handle that. <laughs> um, but um, tell me about how you work at the wedding. Uh, do you take pictures of the couple? Do you pose them? Do you wait for those candid shots? Uh, and then move on into like the timeline, the coordination of the timeline, the vendors that you work with. Tell me about the event itself, what the client is to expect with 808. Sure. So, because we do, again, the planning session with our couples, I know everything that needs to be done. My second photographer, who's always with me, knows what needs to be done as well. They know my role, they know their role, so they know what they're going to expect throughout the entire day. Um, my couples know what to expect from us. They know we're going to do everything we said we're going to do and more. They know that we're gonna show up on time and even a little early to make sure we can get maybe some detail shots of the room, some detail shots of the venue, and then they have our undivided attention at the time that we need to start. Um, throughout the day, I'm gonna check in with them to see if there's anything else they need. Uh, maybe after we do the uh, first look with each other, uh, I'm typically going to ask the bride if she needs a moment to you know, maybe fix up her, or finish her makeup or touch up her makeup if she was a little emotional. Um, I like to let them know what I'm doing and let them know that they're doing a good job of working with me. Um, I, I see a lot of bride and grooms, uh, you know, hoping that they're getting good photos, you know. <laughs> so I'll go up to them and show them a great shot that I did on the back of my camera. Um, I, when I direct them and sort of give them some ideas of things I'd like to see them do, or maybe some ideas for the wedding party to run with. Hey guys, let's all line up like we're playing a game of Red Rover here and we'll all walk together. Uh, you know, don't forget to look at each other and giggle together while we're doing it. You know, it's very complicated for a line of drunk people to do that. <laughs> and that's what makes it fun. Uh, so that's, a, you know, one of those ways that we get some of those great images. Um, but uh, checking in with them, letting them know they're doing whatever it is I asked them and they're doing a great job doing it makes them feel a little more confident, makes them feel better about being there. Uh, but also getting it done and maybe even a little bit early so they can sit at the bar and have a drink with everybody and just have some time to soak up the day and enjoy it uh, is another thing that we like to do. Um, when we're working with vendors like you, 
I don't have much to worry about. Well, I don't really have anything to worry about when I get to the reception. I've already got a timeline from the reception from you guys a few weeks prior to the wedding, from your planning session with a couple. Uh, I know that when I need to start um, uh, speech uh, toast photos, when they need to start first dance photos, all that stuff, I know when that's happening. So I'm not anticipating having to you know, go to the bathroom really fast and run back because the DJ is not taking that time to reach out to us and let us know, hey, in five minutes this is happening. We're going to do their first dance first. Um, so knowing all that stuff ahead of time uh, is very key in making sure the day goes smoothly. Um, you guys do a planning session just like we do with our couples. Uh, having that all written down, uh, having a timeline, having a list, um, doing all that planning ahead of time just leaves everybody open to having a good time. So um, you had talked a little bit about the way that we work. And one of the things that I that always comes to mind when I have this conversation is uh, at an event, we had a little bit of a delay for food. I believe it was a room flip and food. And I remember uh, you and your second photographer uh, going up to you and saying, hey, we're about five minutes, we're about 10 minutes, we're about, you know, trying continuing to update you <laughs> on timelines. So understanding- Didn't you say it was five minutes, five minutes? Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I remember always saying too, uh, don't listen to what I say on the microphone, listen to what I'm telling you, because yes. <laughs> I tell the people what the people need to hear. <laughs> yep. um, so um, understanding that things change, that the best laid timelines always have a little bit of uh, flexibility in there. Mm -hmm. Um, what if uh, you have too many shots to take between things? What if uh, you go over? What if you're supposed to be out of there at nine and there's still some things to, to capture? You know, what's your flexibility at the event, uh, including time and what you have to do and also the end of the night or your contracted time? Sure, well, we do 10 hours with our package, our, our most popular package. So. Time is not usually an issue with us. We give our clients more than enough time to do everything it is that they want. We plan with them ahead of time to make sure that everything gets done properly and build in that flexibility time there where I know it might take me a half hour. I might tell them it takes me 45 minutes. So we have a 15 minute break that they can sit down and maybe enjoy a little bit of air conditioning if it's the middle of August. Um, <laughs> We enjoy being flexible for our clients. Uh, knowing ahead of time that this all needs to get done, I can say and be very honest with them that, you know, you're going to do probably an hour here uh, where, you know, we're not going to have that hour. It's, it's going to take me an hour to do all this, but we're not going to have that hour. So I'll talk with them about maybe what can be done after the reception or maybe at sunset we might go out to do a few more with the two of them. Uh, for us, it's very rare that we're up against a time deadline and not being able to get things done because we do give so much time to our clients and do so much preparation. When that does come, it's most important for us to end at the time that we said we're going to end for those other vendors and for your 300 and some guests that are waiting at cocktail hour. Um, I will always end on time when I said I would and when I need to end because the rest of the day has to happen. Mm -hmm. If my clients lose out on maybe some pictures over by the barn, maybe some pictures out uh, on the field, uh, I'm okay with that and I know they're okay with it because I want them to be able to enjoy the reception just as much as they enjoyed their first look or just as much as they enjoyed their wedding party. Um, I, I make no qualms about it. I know they're there to have a good party. <laughs> they're not there to get married and have photos of you know the day. Uh, so I know that they need to get to the reception. I know they need to have a good time and enjoy themselves. And if I can maybe turn five minutes of photos with them outside, like I did with the couple at Stone Valley Meadows, um, that might be a great little moment where they can steal away and just have a moment with the two of them and us uh, to make another great little shot. Uh, you know, shooting in harsh conditions, uh, you know, lighting stuff in pure darkness outside like we did with that shot, uh, doing stuff in the middle of the day, out in the sun, uh, it doesn't bother us. We're very good and um, very detail-oriented when it comes to, pardon me, the uh, 
excuse me, the lighting uh, and the quality of our images. So we're able to shoot in all kinds of different conditions. So if I'm not able to get maybe a family shot when we're doing our family photos after the ceremony, I can very easily get that shot towards the end of the night, uh, maybe before grandma and grandpa leave uh, out on the dance floor or something. Um, but when we have something that comes along that we're not able to get, uh, always pull out my pen, move it down onto our list, maybe at the reception time, the next opportunity that we're going to have to make sure it gets done. Well, so uh, we've learned a lot. I have one more question, and it's a little bit of a, uh, I don't want to say a gotcha in the photography industry, but it's what <laughs> I hear the most uh, of complaints. Yeah. And that is the turnaround, the end product, the result. It's It's been so long and I haven't seen my wedding pictures. I hear that <laughs> a lot too from couples that, you know, my photographer for my brother, my photographer for my sister's wedding, took them six months, took them eight months to get stuff back. Uh, they got married six months ago and they still don't have images. Um, one thing we really love doing is, you know, within a few days, just pulling out a few images. Uh, the night of the wedding, I go home, I download everything and do an immediate backup so we have multiple copies of the wedding right off the bat. That night, I have three copies of every single image I shot at the wedding. My backup and then two on my computer. Um, we're able to edit all of those images and generally have them back to our couples within two weeks, even during our busiest season, the middle of July, August, September, October. Uh, we tell our clients it's going to be a two-week turnaround, and if I know I'm a little heavy with a lot of two-wedding, three-wedding weekends, uh, I'll let them know that when we do the planning session. You know, that's generally a month out from the wedding. I know how far I am, uh, but, you know, it's usually not more than about three weeks. Uh, they will generally, you know, 99 times out of 100, have their images uh, on their gallery two weeks after the wedding. They are always the first ones to see them. Um, I, I make it a point that the bride and groom see their images first. <laughs> I don't just throw them up on the internet for anybody to see. And, uh, you know, I don't want your maid of honor to say, hey, I looked through all your wedding images. They look great. And a text message when you haven't seen a single one of them. Uh, so generally two weeks after the wedding, we are uh, texting the link to them to their phones so they can look at them instantly. Uh, the worst part about that is they're generally at work when I'm <laughs> at work. So I'll send it to them maybe one o'clock in the afternoon and they're like, oh man, I'm at school working, I'm a teacher. I have to wait another three hours before I get to look at these. Uh, and then I, you know, usually send a little emoticon saying sorry. <laughs> uh, but, you know, let me know when you've looked through them because that's one thing that I love to hear is, oh, I love this little shot that you got, a little detail shot shot of me and dad walking down the aisle. Um, you know, that two years of working with a client, uh, the 40, 50 hours we spend editing the images, uh, standing in the hot sun in the middle of August shooting them, uh, makes it all worthwhile when they're in love with them. You know, when they absolutely love their images and can't wait to share them. Uh, typically a few days after that is when they'll get their USB box uh, the prints, the USB drive, all in their nice little wooden box. Um, the thing that I love most about handing that to a client, which I don't get to do very often because a lot of people live out of town. Uh, when they do live in town, I, I love to be able to just hand it to them. Is, you know, they tend to have booked us a year ago, two years ago, whatever it is, and they almost forget about that. So <laughs> they almost feel like it's something they didn't pay for. They're like, oh my gosh, this is ours? This is awesome, you know, and so, yeah, it's yours. You get to keep it. It's yours for the rest of your life. Uh, and they pull the prints out and start flipping through them. And when she puts her hand on her mouth to, you know, hold back the tears, when they high five each other because they thought that was a really funny shot that I got, <laughs> or, uh, you know, I love seeing that emotion from them. Uh, and I like to relive those memories with them. Um, you know, they, when they pull one out, they were like, I didn't even know you were doing this. And I'm like, Man, that, I liked that one, too. Um, those generally 70 shots tend to be only about maybe 1% of the images uh, that they ended up getting from us. Uh, typically see 800 to 1,000 images from us. Uh, but they are the best of the best images that are there that are going to really represent the love, the connection, the fun that we had the day of the wedding. 
um, to really represent exactly what it was like being there so everybody else can feel those emotions down the road. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you for coming in. Thank hey. you for doing the two things that you dislike doing. <laughs> I appreciate it. I know well, everybody out there appreciates it also. And, you know, just really a heartfelt thanks for me. I, I've been working with you guys, I don't know, 15, 20 years. I, pretty much just I'd say maybe as long as you've been in business. <laughs> uh, it is truly always a pleasure when we work with Legacy Event Group. You guys just, I, I, until you work with other people, <laughs> other DJs, you don't know how good you are and how detail-oriented you are and how flexible you are and how much that makes everybody's lives. Not only the bride and grooms, but the other vendors, uh, just really thankful. Well, I appreciate that, yeah. I appreciate that. It's one of the things we pride ourselves on, so <laughs> thank you for the compliment. You're very welcome, very welcome. Uh, lastly, I would like you to tell everyone how to get a hold of 808 Studios, um, what, best, what best method there is, and uh, how the communication process can continue on. Uh, go ahead and let them know how to get a hold of you. I, I, I'm reachable really anyway if you want to reach out to us on facebook or uh website with our contact page uh the website's 808studiosphotography.com uh we you know don't really mind how you get in touch with us get in touch with us from there i will generally reach out to you with a text message um it's just easy for me to text right there have all your information in one spot on my phone uh reach out uh and then make a time that we can chat on the phone all right. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming in, Nick. I appreciate it. Hey, a pleasure. Uh, we'll probably have you back for some more deep dive stuff, uh, <laughs> simply because I like to see you squirm on camera. <laughs> uh, spoken like a true friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you guys very much. Uh, that's it for today. Once again, my name is Sean from Legacy Event Group. We'll see you on the next one.